and uh, I'm going to expose a couple of them tonight, and then we're going to expose some next month. Part two is next month, okay? So let's get going. We got a brand new website. I hope you took a quick look at it. Looks pretty good. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, we're still on the radio every day of the week now on 1010 a.m. And you can catch all the archive radio shows off the website. Just click the uh, podcast button there. Omni FM carries all of them. And I'm also on a secular radio on the internet. Uh, my listeners dipped last week. They had about 1,200 listeners. We're down from 1,800. So <clears throat> I'm gonna next Sunday. I hope I, I hope we can get it back up to whatever it's supposed to be. <laughs> I don't even know. That was my fifth time to be on there, so I'm kind of playing with it, see if it's worth keeping. So far, it's going good. Amen. All right. If you want to help us, you can go to Amazon. Those of you who are wealthy people, you buy stuff off of Amazon. Delivered right to your dorm. By the way, they're going to start taxing everything you buy on the internet. Did you see that this week? Supreme Court decision. Yeah. Everything you buy on the internet, now you're going to start paying sales tax on. This is a social service as well as a healing center. I give out this information. People love it. All right. So just put in smileamazon.com and put in our charity, and they'll pay us money while you buy stuff. Now, that couldn't be any better. Won't cost you a nickel. Same thing on Good Search. If you don't want to use Google. All right, tonight's broadcast will be on our YouTube channel number two, House of Healing AZ. I'm thinking about making a package out of this tonight and next month and uh, sell it as a separate, separate thing. Donations only or something. Satan secrets. I think I might do that, depending on how well this goes. All right. <clears throat> If you know somebody that's too scared to come for deliverance, you can get one of these deliverance, self-deliverance healing lists. I'll send it to you. Just send me an email. I'll be happy to send you one if you're mentally ill or if you're not. Got them both covered there. And you YouTubers, remember, you have to open up a terror cell in your church and uh, start picking off the people that need deliverance and healing. If you don't do it, nobody else is going to do it over at your church. And okay? they're not going to minister to them it's up to you to do it and you can do it I started out knowing nothing to very little nothing and you just kind of learn as you go sometimes and you make mistakes but you keep going you screw stuff up you keep going and God gives you grace and you screw up again you get some more grace see where sin abounds grace is that much more abounds. so if you screw up a lot then you can get a lot of grace and gradually you'll stop screwing up and it'll start going smoother. You know, this is just common sense, isn't it? Yeah, but you got to take that first step and get going and not just sit there and live your life for yourself anymore. You're supposed to be a servant of God, Amen. not some rotten gut TV preacher where everybody waits on you. You are a servant of Christ. You know what servants do? Serve. Deep. <laughs> wow, Brother Mike's got a master's degree. Hey, our donation boxes are on the doors. The doors are all permanently locked until they're, the things are full. Sorry about that. You can donate on the website. Thank you. I'm using the money right now to pay utility bills. And tonight's Bible study. The Satan secrets. Uh, I wanted to share with you some things tonight that uh, I was saved and in church for years. I came out of the Assembly of God religion, and uh, there was so much stuff I didn't know about the spirit world and God and the devil. It was unbelievable. And I was a on fire Christian when I was in the Assembly of God church. I was a pillar in my church, two churches. And uh, I was involved in all kinds of ministry, doing all kinds of stuff. Just incredibly ignorant, massively ignorant, spiritually. And uh, I wanted to share a couple of these huge revelations God gave me over the years. I want to take it nice and slow, so uh, you'll have time to get mad at me. <clears throat> now, tonight's Bible study, 
here's an illustration of it. you can see that's a human brain and That yellow stuff in there is your mind your mind is located in your Brain your brain is the most complicated and the greatest thing God ever created in the natural world The spirit world I don't know that much about in the natural world the human brain and the mind is Incredible they've been studying it for hundreds of years and we still only know very little about it It's really an incredible miracle in light of that. Let's go to secret number one Spirit beings not all of them, but some of them can read human beings minds. I Did not know that years ago and when I found out about it, it sure explained a lot of things. Years ago, I used to be a rehabilitation counselor for years in the secular world, and I used to work with the disabled. And uh, technology was the most fantastic thing we ever saw, particularly with people who were quadriplegics or paraplegics. The advances in technology have been just the most incredibly wonderful thing you could ever imagine and as you know you've already seen these things quadriplegics and paraplegics can now use computers and when they first came out they were similar to these where uh, they had blow sticks and modified mouses where somebody who was handicapped here could operate a keyboard without having to use their fingers and then later on, years later, the technology kept going up and advancing, and then they they moved to facial recognition and facial movements to operate the computer. Then they now recently they moved to eye movements. So if you're a uh, complete quadriplegic and you have no movement of anything, now you can still operate a computer. It's fantastic. And the computer and the software recognizes your eye movements and you can navigate through the system moving learning how to move your eyes in certain different directions and pauses and different things really it's it is really fantastic for disabled people it's really great <clears throat> Hawking uh, the super genius died recently he had one of them computers he had no capacities of any kind he had Facial recognition computer systems. He had uh, the eye movement system. He had all the advanced uh, computerized equipment. It's really fantastic. However, guess what's happening now? Uh, you're not going to believe it. Guess what's already been invented? You're not going to believe it. Ah, uh, uh, you got it. They have now come out with a system. I know this sounds nuts. <clears throat> the Mind Desktop system allows you to control a computer. The computer reads your mind. You can get one of these headsets for about a hundred bucks, and. Uh, it allow, follows the electrical activity in the user's brains and it transmits this data to the computer through a Bluetooth device. And uh, your new term to learn is brain machine interfacing. That's coming down the pike fast. Some guy in University of Israel invented this thing. And the guy's a genius. And it's really something that's going to allow people to run a computer just using their mind. The computer is reading the thoughts in your mind. It's already here. Is it everywhere? No, it's not everywhere yet, but you know, obviously that takes time. But this is right around the corner. You know, like but all kinds of different things are right around the corner. This is one of them using a computer using your brainwave patterns associated with your thoughts
Um, could be anyone. Friends, family member. Do you have someone? Female. I want you to imagine she's walking towards you. All right. So she about she about this tall. Actually, she's she's a friend, isn't she? She's a friend. Is she here today? No. No. Best friend, right? Yeah. Um. Just look at me for a second. Inside your head, just say the name. Inside your head, don't. Um. Uh, Kelsey? Kelsey? Say, <laughs> 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 so, um, it's a bunny, right? Yeah. Bunny? Is it bunny? Little bunny? Focus on the object. It's your handbag. Your handbag? I didn't order that course, but question <clears throat> if they can now read your mind with computers and that guy can read your mind through demons what's the probability uh, God can read your mind why well, say it pretty high uh, how about Michael the Archangel pretty probability pretty high uh, how about Satan Probability pretty high. Yeah, I think he can do a little better job than a professor at a Jewish professor in Israel Yeah This guy here is reading minds through demons So the probability that so, some level of demons probably familiar spirits the probability is they can do it So that means if they can do it Somebody might be able to read your mind I'm not talking about just your spouse. That's reading facial expressions. That's a little different. I do that all the time. Yeah. Check this out. In addition to reading minds, Genesis chapter 20, uh, Abraham told these people that, hey, this hot babe I'm with, she's my sister. If he told me his wife, what would happen to him? Boom. And they, they took her. He was right. They took her. And guess what? God came to the king in a dream. Right? And if any of you have ever had a spiritual dream from demons or from God, you know that that dream feels different than a regular dream. It's got a totally different feel to it. It's like got a, it's a, it's got a vivid concept to it that's not in a regular dream. And in this dream, he could hear God talking to him as clear as a bell and warning him that he was in trouble because he took somebody's wife. First Kings chapter 3 in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream. And the Bible says he asked him what he wanted him to give him. And you know the story. Solomon then said, hey, I want... Wisdom and knowledge so I can govern your people and Jehovah said hey, that's a great answer, but the point of this tonight is They were talking with each other in a dream They weren't talking like this I'm talking to you they were talking somewhere in the spirit world back and forth conversing in a dream 
in addition people know this is common sense spirits can cause all kinds of things to happen in your subconscious mind can they not every normal person knows that uh, they cause all kinds of weird dreams repetitive dreams nightmares different things sleepwalking uh, sleep paralysis you wake up in the middle of the night you're frozen you can't yell you can't move you feel like somebody's choking all these things are real and they all come from the spirit world to you and it's all involving your mind your subconscious mind your soul your emotions all these things happen in the spirit world and most normal people have experienced something like this or something similar to it over their life you run in occasionally I'll run into somebody that comes in for counseling they're just spiritually dead as a doornail they've never had a dream they've never had a spiritual experience it happens but generally speaking no most people I really believe that most people have had some kind of interaction good or bad with the spirit world somewhere somehow first Corinthians chapter 4 uh, excuse me second Corinthians. if our gospels hid it is hid to those who are lost in whom the God of this world has blinded the not my thoughts of those who do not believe so here the Bible is specifically saying that Satan can manage or manipulate thoughts well how's he doing well first of all you have to be able to see him You can't block something you don't know is there. How does he do it? I don't know. The Bible just says he can do it, so I you know, receive it by faith. But in First Peter chapter five, the Bible says, "Nepho, don't get drunk or don't don't get high. Be vigilant, be sober, for your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may gulp down or catapino, guzzle down or gulp down. How is he destroying them?" Okay, well, man, I'm not being destroyed. I'm in perfect health. He's after your mind because the person who gets your mind gets the rest of you. The rest of the body follows the mind. The Holy Spirit wants you to re renew your mind, and He wants you to voluntarily give Him your mind. The devil wants to hijack your mind, steal it from you, and dominate your mind. And whoever gets the mind, the Holy Ghost or the devil, gets the rest of the person. That's why the that the mind is the, as Joyce Meyer would say, it's the battleground. <clears throat> what the lion is looking for is your mind. He wants to devour your mind. Your thoughts, your attitudes, what you focus on, what you believe, what you think. All that stuff is right up here. That's what he's after. And that's how he wins so often. Spirit beings, God, the devil, demons, whatever, angels, are able to put thoughts into a person's mind. They can plant a thought in a person's mind. How do they do it? I don't know. You and I can plant thoughts in people's mind, but I have to do it auditorily. You know, I'll see you Tuesday. I just put that thought in somebody's mind. Um, but I can't put a thought. In, I mean, I could if I took that course that, the, that I had up there earlier, but I don't want to do that because I don't want to pick up any spirits and that's going to be the end of me but I can't supernaturally put a thought in your mind Charles Manson could but that was that was all demons right but this is what the devil does the spirits put these thoughts in your mind and these are the top five ones that I run into most often it's some kind of a negative thought or it's a lie or it's some kind of a fabricated religious thought or a fabrication or an embellishment or some kind of flattery 
usually I mean there's other thoughts obviously those are the ones I mostly see the key to it all is the devil is goal is to control your mind <clears throat> and he does it by putting thoughts into your mind and he puts the thought in your mind because he suspects or knows you won't recognize the thoughts from him. You'll think it's your thought. Once you think the thought is yours, then you're in trouble. Then he can manipulate you because you think it's your idea. For example, King David in First Chronicles chapter 21, Satan put thoughts in David's mind. And he numbered Israel and brought great judgment on the nation. Uh, in 2 Samuel, he did what? Yeah, man, he had a whole bunch of lustful thoughts popping his mind. That used to happen to me constantly all my life before I got delivered from lust demons in 2004. I had constant chronic lust thoughts. It drives you nuts. Ladies, it drives us nuts. I hope it drives you nuts. If you like them, then you, you've got to get down here to the altar tonight. I got so sick of them, I hated them. And I was, it was a major thing of guilt, uh, frustration, you know. And then the other thoughts would come in from the devil saying, those are my thoughts and I was a horrible Christian because I was having thoughts and why are you looking at her breasts and thinking about her nipples? And then, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. You're not a Christian. You're not you saved. And I would get all these condemnation thoughts after I got these lust thoughts pumped in. No amens there. So that's this happens a lot. I get left out here alone. But anyway, <laughs> what it is, <laughs> what it is, in my, Matthew 16, We're delivered already. Peter, <laughs> Peter started saying thoughts that weren't his and Jesus called it the devil on it remember that it was unbelievable Peter's talking but it wasn't him talking the devil was talking right out of his mouth and that happens a lot during deliverance not a lot but I mean sometimes the de demons will talk to you they don't talk to us here much but it, they do in other ministries they talk all the time here they they, may, they usually make short statements like no or they get fussy I'm not coming out yet. and they say that and that's a red flag. They are so now they're in bigger trouble And uh, Ananias and Sapphira, oh my god, they saw this other Guy donate this money. He did it humbly and quietly, but some other people saw it happen and they thought oh, that's nice uh, Jacob donated some money. Oh, that's that's sweet and they overheard it. So these thoughts started coming in their minds Hey, you know what? We we've got some land. Maybe we could get some recognition. They both probably had rejection demons and low self-esteem, and so they thought, well, we need to kind of build ourselves up a little bit. We'll pull a stunt. That was all based on thoughts in their mind, right? And then cost them their lives. Oh, poor Judas, John thirteen. That was all greed thoughts there. The devil was just putting one thought after the other. Go ahead and set it up, and he'll get out of it again. He always gets out of everything. You've seen him, haven't you? He always gets out of it. And get the 30 pieces of silver. It's all good. He'll get out of it. Join back up with him later. Whatever thoughts he had. I don't know what he was thinking, but I know they were all bad. And the Bible says it came from the devil, that's for sure. And then... The great apostasy is still ahead of us before the rapture and the tribulation Paul taught us and uh, In Timothy he mentions it here The great apostasy is coming. He says at some point in time the born-again spirit-filled Christians are going to bag their faith Prosecco what does that mean? They will be focusing on Demonic teachings teachings from demons it's already started in the kooky charismatic movement here in America. They've got 
all kinds of deranged, weird doctrines. Seminars on how to interact with your guardian angel. How to be his buddy. Party on, dude. How to take a trip to heaven. Who? <laughs> Can't wait to go. All this weird demonic teaching coming out to cause confusion and separation in the church. It's really weird, but it's coming and it's already started. Doctrines of devils, teachings of demons is what that means. Luke chapter 8. The Bible says that the word of God goes out all kinds of different places, and sometimes the word falls on the wayside. And then what happens to it? It says, uh, I wrote the devil, it says, not the neighbor. The devil comes in I wrote to pick up and carry away, is what that Greek word means. If I picked that chair up and took it in the hall, that would be I wrote. Right? He picks picks up what? Wow, that's a th the thoughts. If I say God loves you, that's spoken words. You received it in your mind. It went into your spirit man or your soul. And he removed it. Is that what it says? Don't get mad at me. I'm just reading what it said. And then why did he do it? It says it right there. He didn't want them believing and he didn't want them to be saved. Romans chapter 1. Paul explains what happened to humanity before the flood. And he says they didn't want to retain any knowledge of God anymore. So they willfully and deliberately told God to shove it and then he said he let them go and gave them up to a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind is a mind that's useless and been rejected by God. It's a mind that's hopeless and lost. Okay? You can be lost and still alive if you have a reprobate mind. By definition, you're still alive if you have a mind. If you're dead, the corpse doesn't have a mind. The, the person has left the corpse, correct? Right. Is that why the Bible refers to mind, body, and soul? Well, no. Uh, the well, mind, body. Because that your soul and your spirit, being the spirit part, goes with the mind. Now, wait a minute. What's, what the body's left, but where's the mind go? Heaven or hell? Or That's what I'm asking right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've seen that video. Okay. All right, he already knows that. No. If you're dead, you don't have an inner man. Your mind's not there. So if you have a reprobate mind, by definition, you're still alive. So by definition, you can be lost, eternally lost, and be alive. Correct? By additional definition, you can also be eternally saved and possess eternal life and still be alive, which you possess right now. Hallelujah. Jesus said, now you are clean through the word that I have spoken to you. You have eternal life now, and it's a down payment of the Holy Ghost. Your eternal life is completed after you enter eternity. But it starts now. That deserves the amen. <laughs> Isn't it true, though? You have eternal life right now, and you're still alive. But the completion of it is not until so, eternity. So the reprobate, that's what the devil is trying to get on to you to keep you here, your mind floating around with him. No, a reprobate mind is someone that's not redeemable. If you got a reprobate mind, it's, it's over, you're gone. But if you, you die with a reprobate mind, you go to hell. So the reprobate mind goes to the hell. With yeah. yourself. You're already on your way to hell now while you're alive. Correct? 
What'd you say? When your conscience isn't, no, yeah, well, it's not gone, but it's what the Bible calls seared. It's, it's cauteriazo, it's a Greek word. It means it's cauterized. It doesn't work anymore. So the person that has a reprobate mind and a cauterized conscience is irredeemable. They're dead while they're al alive, Paul said. Dead while they yet live. You can reach a point. Nobody here is even close to that. But I mean, there are people out there, a few, who reach such a sick point that they have a reprobate mind. Hitler, Stalin, the guy they just got down here, Scottsdale, that serial killer. What's that guy? Shot seven or eight people there last month. Forgot his name. Anyway, those type of people are in deep trouble while they're still alive. Mike, is that what they call a sociopath? No, no, a sociopath is a is a psychiatric condition, but yeah, you, in terms of your conscience, yeah, you're, they, they do have seared consciences. A sociopath is somebody that, you know, does the most horrible thing, but and has no sense of that's wrong, right or wrong, I shouldn't do that, you're hurting somebody, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, a sociopath could have a reprobate mind, so that's a possibility, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but so what God said there's a whole the, the entire human race Everybody was demon possessed everybody had sold their soul to the devil the whole planet So Jehovah said I got to find some people to start this over and he hunted diligently only found eight people Only one of them was a hardcore servant of God the other seven were okay <laughs> <laughs> Eight people on the planet. That's a very low percent That is bad And of course, you know what happened next, you know swimming <laughs> James chapter 1 here we go <clears throat> It says let no man say when he is tempted I'm being tempted by God Because God does not tempt people with evil. Okay? He can't be tempted and he never tempts anybody. Okay? So, all these crappy things that have been happening to you lately, they're not coming from the good Lord. They're coming from the other side or you're doing it self-inflicted right it's not coming from God and you can't tempt God with evil yeah okay? uh, it's best not to tempt him at all because Jesus said I'm not gonna jump off of here and make a show of my power that that's arrogance and pride I'm not making that jump. It says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't say he wouldn't be saved or he would have been killed. He didn't say anything. He just said, I'm not even going to go there. What a lesson for born again Christians. Don't even go there if you know it's good for you. And most Christians don't. Let's go to the next verse. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away. By somebody else's lust a hot babe. No Their own lust Okay, while I was staring at all the hot babes years ago staring at the booties Staring at the breath. I was it wasn't their lust that was manifesting. It was mine Well, they made me mad. That's why I was yelling. Whoa click No, they didn't that was your anger manifesting over their behavior Hello this on 
the devil can't tempt you with anything that's not already in you. I never am tempted by hot looking guys. <laughs> Nobody comes into my office GQ packing nothing why I Have no interest in good-looking packing guys The devil doesn't tempt you with something that's not he hasn't already put in there He only comes after what he's deposited in the bank So the guy at work that pisses you off is a plant Set up to draw out what the devil already put in you Then he told you to blame him that's why you're never gonna get healed Because as long as you're blaming somebody else for your problem You get to die sick give yourself a hand Translation you're a born-again box of rocks dumb Christian The devil can't tempt you with anything that's not already in there See? Nobody ever comes into my office ever Pulls out massive wad thousand dollar bills. Hey, Mike, look at that. I ain't, I don't have it. The money is not in there. I got rid of it years ago. It's gone. The devil doesn't waste any time with it. He's not stupid like Christian. He thinks before he tempts him. He scans through your body He looks at your thoughts And he says what kind of assets do I have in that person? After assessing your assets he then brings in the temptation to attack you I am never ever Tempted. Never. With racism. Never. The devil never sends me a bunch of blacks, a bunch of Mexicans, a bunch of Chinamen. Hey, there you go, Mike. There's blacks, Mexicans, and Chinamen. Get them, buddy. Fine, come in, have a seat. Love you. That's not in there. So I don't get that. What were you tempted with this week? Let's think about it just for a second. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Think about it. What did the devil come after you this week to tempt you with? Uh, let me tell you, you're you're slow. <laughs> it was your spouse. <laughs> oh yeah, remember that thing? Remember that thing? Yeah, there's a thing in your house. It's a spouse. <laughs> And the devil took a look at you and scanned you. Ooh, there's some frustration, spouse frustration in there. Ah, so what do I got to do? Well, let's get Brenda to come in and say this and that and do this and that. Oh, now we've got him because we planted in there and he never removed it. Spousal frustration. The Pope never gets it. Uh, oh, Pope Francis, man, his wife never comes up to what you didn't pick up your underwear. God, the socks are. He's not married, man. Not interested in a wife. The devil gets in with a whole range of other things, but I'm not going into that. No, we're not going there. We value our life. 
the devil puts something in you and then he comes back for it like depositing money in a bank John 14 I'm not going to talk much more with you because Archon the ruler of Cosmos the ruler of the human world is coming for me, but he has ah, so The divine Savior the Son of God sinless God's limb The devil couldn't get him to sin why he couldn't get anything planted in there. How did I get saved? The devil couldn't get anything planted in him. That's how I got saved. Left up to me. Oh, fine in hell. Left up to me. It wasn't left up to me. The prince of darkness came for him. He butchered him. He he murdered him. He beat him up bad, but No sin He did everything he could for 30 or something years however long it was to plant something in there and Couldn't do it Incredible Anybody who sins finds Jesus incredible I tried Lord Luke 22 Check it out. What happened? Uh Oh Judas that poor guy The devil put something in him God it was greed oh. Greed It's awful And then Judas went his way check it out once the devil puts something in you and then you act on it it becomes you You didn't hear me The devil had it himself. It was his evil. It's his sin It's his lust. It's his bitterness. It's his murder. It's his hate. It's his anger But when you let him plan it in you and then you acted on it It's no longer his it's now yours Judas went his way Not Satan's way It wasn't Satan anymore Once you Took that spousal frustration and the kids. Oh the kids are nuts aren't they? Kids will drive you to drink <laughs> Once you get that little kid Frustration in there As soon as he plants that thing in there The devil then starts bringing the kids to you He lines them up like a Kmart blue light special he'll even line up neighborhood kids What's he doing there he's smart we're stupid he planted that frustration with whatever it is and then he draws in the temptation He knows what he's doing. How'd that go? Yeah. Why is that significant? <clears throat> when I was serving the Lord at the Assembly of God religion, I was speaking in tongues. I was sincere. I was a, a basically a good person. I had a series of flaws, but what I didn't know was. These thoughts and these urges that I would have that used to condemn me so much and frustrate me so much and The things I prayed over so much and cried over so much and wouldn't go away. I Didn't know they weren't mine And I didn't know it was all false condemnation The devil would put a thought in my mind a lustful thought an anger thought and I would think it was my thought and then I would Feel guilty over having that thought And I didn't realize that it wasn't my thought 
and if it wasn't my thought it wasn't my sin it only became my sin when I acted on it Amen. it's not a sin to find someone attractive oh she's pretty look at that body and then you move on the Bible says it has to be the thought and lust combined to commit adultery Hello a thought coming into your head while you're at the teller and I had one I had it before you know what I could just grab that she's looking over there I could grab and then I thought what about what if God's name is where did that thought come from I used to think well gee I better go ask God to forgive me and I would not knowing what I just taught myself it wasn't my thought a spirit put a thought in my head just grab it and run for it, boy you idiot. <laughs> what was he doing? It's called spiritual probing. Yeah. See? Yeah. Uh huh. You. Some of you know about spiritual probing. You've been picked up at a Circle K by aliens, <laughs> and for some reason they always go to a Circle K. They don't go to QT. I don't get it. But anyway, let's say you're at a Circle K some night. It's late at night. You look up. Boop. There's a green guy standing there, and suddenly you're. Being astral projected I'm somebody they got you on a cot they spread your leg. They're staring into your fanny. <laughs> I Don't understand why aliens are so interested in proctology. It makes no sense <laughs> Stupid. The devil tries to make you think Somebody else's sin is your sin. The reason he's doing that is to give you false condemnation. He wants you to condemn yourself because when you condemn yourself, you have no faith to ask and believe help from God. Because you've already pre condemned yourself. In worldly terms, um, are, are triggers somewhat like the same thing? You know, somebody says, you know, like in different groups, they teach on triggers and set people up. That's exactly what it is. But it's normally in the NA or AA group, yeah. they call them triggers. Yeah. Counselors call them triggers. But what it really is, is the devil plants sin in you. Okay, in that case, AA, NA, drugs, alcohol, different things. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And then. The devil knows the root cause of why you use and so you trail it back. He knows how to do it. Was it child abuse? Was it disappointment? Was it marital abuse? What happened? What triggered the wound that triggers the using of the alcohol? The alcohol and the drugs are not the problem. It's the wound that drove them to it or pushes them to it. See? So the devil knows that wounds in there so he knows how to trigger that wound. What triggers it? Okay, so he scans you and goes, "Oh, this person here, uh, he doesn't like illegal immigrants. So let's bring him a bunch of Mexicans." <laughs> see, yeah. he scans you to see what triggers you. Oh, he doesn't like bossy women. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. When Vivian was on our ministry team here, we had people triggered. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, she used to trigger people. Why? She was a dominant alpha a female. You know, I was fine with her. I I just let her. I cut her loose, just just to irritate everybody. And uh, so the devil will use a certain personality temperament or personality type in another person to trigger you. In the same way. He knows what kind of girl you like. He knows what kind of guy you like. He knows what kind of things piss you off. He knows what frustrates you. And he, he doesn't bring this stuff over there. He brings that stuff over there. And that's, a, that's what they call a trigger, what he was talking about. Devil uses triggers all the time. Oh, he loves them. He's great at them. And if you try to leave your job to get away from that trigger, Next job, there's two triggers. Yeah, he's right. You can't run from triggers because the triggers in you. So the only way to get out of it is suicide. 
and we never recommend that That's healing right. is much better than suicide <laughs> the trigger is in you and the Holy Spirit is offering you to remove that trigger so it doesn't bother you anymore I have had a number of my triggers removed uh, money lust different things I still got a few triggers left <laughs> <laughs> Is Rick, Rick here? Sounds like him laughing. Now, he's married too. Now, <laughs> the point is this spirit beings and now humans can read your mind. Correct? And that's why. You have looked over your past now and you said oh my god it's uncanny at exactly the wrong moment such and such happened it was almost like it was planned and it was planned I was going here and I was only supposed to be here but I was supposed to leave early but I didn't and then he walked up Remember that That's bad luck no in the spirit world. There's no such thing as luck. It does not exist In the spirit world everything is analyzed planned out The advantage that you have if you take advantage of it is that the spirit beings they can't see the Holy Ghost. He's never been seen that we know. Of. So that means the angels don't know where he is, the demons don't know where he is, and the devil doesn't know where he is. That means you have the advantage 100% of the time because he's on your side, not their side. And they don't know when he's coming. That's why he's so dangerous to the devil. He never sees him coming. He don't know he's there. He jumps right on him out of the blue. Boop. That's why it says he flees. Well, if I was scared like that, I'd run too. Or faint. <laughs> Any other comments on your mind? Reading your mind? Using your mind? Temptations? Triggers? Isn't it kind of like the word of knowledge? <clears throat> You know, like, you know, God gives the different gifts, and so, you know, some of us can get a word of knowledge about somebody. Yes. So the spirit world uses that also? Well, no, it's, it's not the gift of knowledge. No, that's the gift that God gave you. But that's the Holy Spirit working through that gift right. to reveal something in that person. So you say, well, God told me that you were praying the other night, and you asked him this. Yeah. Right, okay. so that's a gift of knowledge. That's not mind reading or mind control mm -hmm. That's the Holy Spirit moving with your gift But it's him reading your mind the Holy Spirit reading your mind which he's well able to do obviously I was at a Leroy Jenkins service one time and I always ran down to the front He's dead now I love Leroy Jenkins. Have you ever heard of him? If you weren't in one of his services, you missed an entertaining evening. You really did. I miss him. It was a carnival. He was utterly amazing. <clears throat> Leroy would stand up there wearing an Elvis outfit, <laughs> coal black hair, not one gray hair anywhere. And he would sing, How Great Thou Art, fabulous. And he would have a word of knowledge for, I mean, spot on the money. And then he would start teaching, he'd misquote a scripture. He'd come up with a story that made no sense whatsoever. Then he'd pray for somebody to be instantly healed. <laughs> then he'd come over here and misquote another scripture. I mean, you never knew what was going to happen. Well, one lady, this lady stands up. I, I want prayer. 
Leroy and she goes does it have anything to do with twenty thousand dollars? She goes ah She starts yelling goes to sit down So what happened there what I just told you God had told Jenkins she was praying about a debt of twenty thousand dollars Right and so he asked her is it having to do with twenty thousand dollars? Nobody more entertaining than Leroy Jenkins. Okay, I'll skip that. Nobody, nobody knows who he is. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, he's he died, he died in Scottsdale like a couple of years ago. He's always still on TV. And he's got all those shows backed up. Okay, <clears throat> now let's go on to something else, even more important than what I we just taught on. Right? This is very important. So. Uh, I'll make this the uh, last one. Let's go through it. Uh, I made this term up to describe what God revealed to me several years ago, and it's extremely important. Autonomic processing. There are laws in the spirit world. Let's go. Genesis chapter 1. God said, let the earth bring forth all these different things, grass, trees, fruit trees and then he set the system up to reproduce after its kind okay so uh, apple trees weren't cranking out grapes grape vines were not cramping cranking out watermelons he set the system up so that everything produces after their own kind so to speak <laughs> This is not revolutionary, but believe it or not, if you've got a PhD and you're at Harvard, what I just read to you has got them scratching their heads. They're out of their minds. Any normal person knows God's word's true, unless you've got a PhD. <laughs> now, the replication process is in itself. It's in it. So if I take uh, an apple seed, plant it, water it, fertilize it, the probability of watermelons is like zero. Correct? And the earth brought forth a seed, grass, yielding in itself. It's in the created being. It's in there. <clears throat> Psalms 104. God laid the foundation of the earth, and it is what? Eternal. The earth will never disappear. It will never go away. And Genesis 8, while the earth remains, seed time, harvest, cold and heat, and so on, will go on forever. What's he talking about there? The seasons. Right? We don't have seasons here, but where I'm from in Kansas, there are four seasons. Here there's two. You know, there's, there's hotter in the gates of hell, and then there's warmer, kind of warm as hell. And then there's that's about it. It's all over in Kansas. We have winter summer spring and Thank you, and the Bible says that's eternal It lasts as long as God does That will be happening in the Millennium Okay, okay. God created great whales every living thing in the waters But they only reproduce Right so if you take a killer whale and a porpoise, you raise them together since they're puppies, or whatever they call those things when they're little, they never develop the hots for each other. If you mated them, or if you test tube the babies, because there is no evolution, correct? Everything reproduces. Okay. Every winged fowl birds come after their kind. Well, that's that you. This one looks different. No, that's modification of the species. That's not a new species. Correct? So if you take a bear and put them in Antarctica, and then you take a bear and put them in Kansas, those two bears over the centuries are going to look different, but they're still bears. If you try to mate these two <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'd recommend not. <laughs> now, let's say somebody were to come to you and say, you evolved from an ape. You know that can't be true because Yahweh said, Jehovah said, I made apes to crank out apes. I made humans to crank humans out. Because everybody reproduces after their kind. And I'm talking about personalities. Let's say you... Maybe you were raised in a normal family and you're mad dog nuts. No, that's an emotional mental thing. And you're still a human Hello yeah. <clears throat> What's what do all these things have in common? God set the system up to run automatically So he doesn't have to have anything to do with it anymore Hello, it runs by itself Right, so I was a what they call a surprise baby That's right. Yes, I was uh, I just popped up my mother and dad were fooling around and my mother Mr. Perrion and Both of them incredibly lucky <laughs> And I got created right that's an egg and sperm caper Boop. there were, I had no chance of coming out any kind of animal or goat I was my dad's a human <laughs> mom human me what come on stretch it <laughs> now when I was in the womb, I did have premonitions of some of the things that were going to happen to me that weren't weren't any good in childhood, and so my mother was in labor for three days, and I was holding on to fallopian tubes, <laughs> trying to keep from coming out. I was hanging off. I knew what was going to hit me, and it did. The point I'm trying to make is, <clears throat> God didn't create me. He created the system that created me Hello, he created human reproductivity and then Satan committed How I got created adultery Okay, but God didn't do the adultery he didn't go down and say hey, no, you know I want Nedra and Jack I want you to have adultery and I want you to get pregnant and you have Mike because I'm going to use Mike at the deliverance center to explain how this works <laughs> 60 70 years later, okay, that's how we're doing no God never did that God doesn't do that, but he did do it. So the point I'm trying to make is your organs your guts your heart your kidneys They all run automatically God's not sitting in your heart running your heart he set the system up though that causes your heart to run Everybody with me Expand it on out go ahead Hubble the universe was created by God Genesis 1 1 and he set it up to run without him The whole solar system the whole universe all the Milky Way all whatever's out there God set the whole thing up. How do you do it? I don't know. I don't care. I don't have to know It runs on its own Okay, good Everything in the universe has Some form of energy from God That's how he built the system. It runs on its own energy. There are black holes in space, supposedly, that God created to clean up the crap. Almost like a vacuum cleaner, a giant Kirby. <laughs> and these 
blown up rotten planets these pieces of stars and all this crap evidently I don't again I, I'm, I don't know anything about space I don't know nothing about it apparently it gets sucked into this black hole and it keeps this universe clean where it got I me mean, but anyway the point I'm trying to make again is all that stuff God doesn't do he set the system up to do it for him You know, Ford didn't made your car, but they don't drive your car. You drive it. Gravity was f discovered by Sir Isaac Newton. Okay, this was a, a Stephen Hawking type guy. Monster IQ. And we learned through his discoveries that the entire planet, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, is being pulled to the center of the planet so that if there was nothing beneath me I would disappear and be sucked into the center of the planet he called it gravity, gravity. what is gravity well Sir Isaac Newton didn't understand what we understand he was spiritually ignorant Great man, though. God created gravity on planet Earth. Other planets don't have gravity. Why? Because the Earth is the center of the universe, and this is where people live, and this is where God lives eternally. Jesus sets up his throne in Jerusalem for eternity, and Earth, for whatever reason, is God's home. Why do you do that? You gotta live somewhere. <laughs> Why not Earth? And what's the problem? Why not Earth? I have no problem with it. So there had to be gravity here, or everybody be floating out to the black holes or whatever we do. Duh. Is God holding me down right now? No, but He set the system up to hold me down. I'm going through this rigmarole right now because I got something important to say in a minute. Okay, so just bear with this boring part. The whole system God set up to run without Him. Like you'd manufacture a car, like anything you make. These great outfits I wear. These things are worn by me not the manufacturer I look great in them but they made them but they don't wear them guess what everything has energy it requires energy for gravity and gravity is a super powered energy I mean it's unbelievably powerful it's shockingly powerful if you go up to this to top of the roof here and you walk off the edge here you will drop so help me God like a rock into the parking lot I am NOT even joking then Kelly's gonna have to clean you up <laughs> Arnie's gonna have to take you home everything requires energy okay Spirit beings, although you can't see them and you may not feel them right now, have spiritual energy. I mentioned earlier uh, nightmares, dreams, vision. You can feel spirit beings. Sometimes you sense them in the room, like you get in the creeps. Sometimes you can feel the Holy Ghost in the room and you sense comfort. Spirit beings have energy of some kind. All created things have energy energy gravity is real watch <laughs> that required energy I had to pick it up it took energy to slam it down see it it just went by itself it's like I'm Merlin <laughs> Look, you want here's another miracle. Watch this. See that? 
<laughs> Look, it's exactly the same one. <laughs> Eat your heart out, folks. Stop it. Stop that. <laughs> Thoughts, prayers have energy. Casual prayers for dinner, Lord bless this food, amen, has less energy than intercessory prayer. Jesus, save my son. He's dying of cancer. Father, in the name of Jesus. That prayer, believe it or not, had more energy to it than thank you for my yogurt at McDonald's. Correct? By definition, then, Thoughts ha also have energies mm -hmm. Some thoughts you have are intense thoughts others are casual thoughts. Oh jeez, Where'd she get that shirt? And you go on another subject. It was a casual thought Other thoughts are what are what are they doing here? Oh god Well that had a little more energy and oomph to it then we're where they got that shirt Correct Am I getting too real for you? Okay Behaviors also have energy. This is less energy than that For example All right That's a, I don't know anything about music. I have no skills whatsoever, but that let's play just play along with me. That's a note uh, I think if the notes clear it means something different, but if it's darkened in it means something else different Okay, but let's say let's pretend that note sounds like this Bong. That note is useless It's useless, but if I had an art, some artistic skills and was able to write music, okay, I could write a series of these notes, so to speak, and I could put together a theoretically a beautiful song made out of a series of notes. All I would have to do is get somebody to write the music Then you have to memorize the notes and Apparently whatever instrument you're playing you play it according to the different notes Again, I don't know anything about music, but you got to have different notes for different sounds Right, and then you play it the song according to these different notes well if you keep studying that Song and these notes and you keep playing that song you then listen carefully You then develop a melody and a certain rhythm in that song Each song has a different melody and a different rhythm okay rap music has a different rhythm than classical music so to speak Correct okay in the same way Thoughts are exactly the same way You have a thought in your head you have a sentence in your mind and If you keep repeating that thought over and over again It starts to develop a rhythm Different from other thoughts and sentences in your mind As you keep doing that as you keep doing this you develop a habit or a pattern of thinking mm -hmm. 
so if I was the devil and I was able to put a thought in your mind You're unworthy of God's love you're unworthy and That thought came into my mind and I said wait a minute that, I'm unworthy. That's not true. The Bible says Christ made me worthy I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I am fully worthy in the eyes of God not on my own worthy, but in the worthiness of Christ Then that thought that came into my mind from the devil would have been <sighs> Executed But what if I don't do that? What if I'm not a Christian? What if I've been abused as a child? What if I grew up in a dysfunctional family? What if my parents were jacked up? What if I was beaten as a kid? What if my parents yelled at me? What if the thought would come into my mind and then I would see evidence of it in my family Mom yelling at me dad left me Brother molested me what wait a minute. You're worthless. You're worthless. You're worthless. You're worthless Look, there's proof you're worthless. Proof you're worthless. Proof you're worthless. As you keep repeating that demonic thought in your mind, it then becomes a melody of sorts in your mind. It then becomes a rhythm. It has a rhythm, a natural feel to it. I'm I'm unworthy. I'm worthless. I'm no good. I, I my mom said that I was going to end up like my brother. My, I'm no good. I'm unworthy. And all of a sudden, these repetitive thoughts become habits. See, the other one wasn't a habit. You're unworthy. And I said, no. Wait a minute. The Bible says, boop, and I. That thought right there that thought never became a habit never developed a rhythm Correct because I I Need to get that this in before I go to the next one. Is there any problem right now? Does anybody here have any questions or anybody mad at me or anything? Nobody everybody understood what I was trying to say Okay, let's go Here we go Now, you know what that thing is? Of course you do. That's called a whirlpool. A whirlpool runs on its own. Nobody turns it on. Nobody makes an announcement. Go ahead and start. It just goes. Watch. The whirlpool is running on its own But the only dangerous area is here not out here now these ducks are Looking over there at that whirlpool and they're checking it out But both those ducks or geese or whatever they are Are sensing that things dangerous they're sensing it and if you'll notice one of them takes a closer look see him there and then he paddles hard and gets away from it Do you see that <laughs> as you take a thought from your childhood from your first marriage from whatever it is and that thought is Demonic 
a negative, self-destructing, lustful, fearful, anger, whatever the thought is. And you keep repeating that thought in your mind. It starts to develop a familiar rhythm to it. It kind of turns into a song you learned. And at some point, what I'm about to tell you, here's what God showed me. At some point, the thought becomes a whirlpool and you can't stop it. Autonomic processing is the name I made up for it. When your thoughts develop their own melody and their own rhythm, as you keep repeating them over and over and over, sometimes thousands of times from childhood to adulthood, at some point, the thoughts become a habit. And then the habit becomes a a demonic whirlpool and they never stop so a 62 year old man old man is still thinking about the time his dad yelled at him in the shed when he was five you idiot that thing still plays in there What's going on here? Your mind is like the entire universe. It can run on its own. I just answered several questions you never asked. Why do I always have the same thoughts? Why do I have these racing thoughts when I lay in bed at night, particularly when I try to go to sleep, all of a sudden my mind goes here, then it starts to go and go and go and it runs and runs. And runs. Well, Mr. Impatience, <laughs> thanks for your input. You're so busy. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Now we could prop him up here and use him as a get skip, but listen carefully. Those thoughts that you keep having started out as a single thought at some point in your life. Could have been years ago. And those thoughts, it was a note, then, you, then it became a series of notes, then it became a song, then that song kind of had a feel to it and a nice rhythm, and then that song kind of started playing in your head all by itself. Oh man, I just had a thought, I, oh, I'm, I can't get the song out of my head, it just keeps playing. I heard it the other day on the radio, it won't go away. At some point, the devil puts those thoughts in there because he knows if they become repetitive and a habit, it will become a whirlpool and he won't have to put them in anymore. They run on their own. Think about it for a second. How many times and hours and weeks and months and years have you spent trying to help somebody? 
You go over it with them a million times. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? We went over that, didn't we? 50 times. When are you going to stop doing that? I just told you why. Autonomic processing. It now runs on its own. Bob, God, we've been praying for you for months. You still hate yourself? God, jeez, golly, now you're making me hate myself. <laughs> the person praying for the person is spiritually ignorant and as almost all Christians are. Thoughts can become whirlpools that run on their own. And there's nothing you can say or do to the person to stop it. You've tried it. Stop it! Will you quit it? For God's sake! You've tried every technique in the world. Heaping shame on them. Going moral on them. Threatening them with violence threatening to nothing works. Why? Autonomic processing the thoughts now run on their own How does it work, okay? Organize notes make a song a collection of thoughts make a sentence a concept an idea Correct. You keep repeating those thoughts over and over again, and it develops into a habit. The thought then takes on a life of its own. It kind of gets a like music. You like a certain style of music, and you can kind of feel it. It kind of rolls through your head normally. If you don't break that habit of thinking pattern, it becomes a whirlpool and then it runs on its own. What's the good news? This concept of autonomic processing works for God and for Satan. It's immoral. It's benign. That's why the Bible says if you will re renew your mind on God's Word and the Holy Ghost, you can develop positive autonomic processing. Examples. Smith Wigglesworth from Britain was in a state of shock when somebody wasn't healed. We're in a state of shock when they are healed. <laughs> Why? He had developed autonomic processing. He had renewed his mind to the point where he expected everyone yes. to be healed. Yes. And that was normal to him. And his whirlpool was a healing pool. Yes. In America, the whirlpool is rejection, low self-esteem, mental illness, negative thoughts about yourself, resentments for your parent. And as you keep processing these thoughts, they develop their own rhythm and suddenly they run on their own and you can't stop them anymore. It becomes natural to you. Yep. It was natural for me before 2004 to stare at women's breasts and look at them. It was just normal When I caught myself doing it, I would say what I'm sinning again, and then I would try to stop stop it I'd even look away. Oh God <laughs> It was at the mall. I looked like one of those things in the car with the head going I was going like that all the time But other times I'd get I was too poop to fight and I just oh I give up. Oh, there's a nice pair. Oh, there's some booty. I just quit I'm tired then I would go home and condemn myself. What kind of a Christian am I? 
What are you doing at the mall staring booty? What's wrong with you? Am I saved? What's going on here? Can't you see it? Hey look, I'm using myself as an illustration. The devil is putting the thought in my mind If you take the thought in your mind and you keep replaying that thought It then starts to develop its own rhythm like music I'm no good. I'm a failure. I'm, I'm a loser. I'm good. This isn't gonna work. That's not gonna work You start to develop negative thinking patterns which become very natural to you You start to expect crap to fall apart yeah. Wigglesworth used to be that way, but he renewed his mind on God's word and broke the autonomic processing of sin and negativity and started autonomic processing Holy Ghost style Amen. If the thought is a habit and you catch yourself thinking about it You're headed for deep trouble Because at some point Like the universe it will just run on its own Why is it doing that God created it to do that? Yes Tony Robbins knows what I'm talking about, but doesn't understand how it works. But he knows what I'm talking about. These self help gurus sell these books, DVDs, and they, they make millions. And they train these people to think positive. And no, it's not a bad thing. But I'm, I'm, ex I'm sure what I'm trying to illustrate here, here is that even sinners understand what I'm saying to you, but they don't know how it works spiritually. So the devil took that positive thinking stuff. A lot of it was good. Then he brought it over to the Christians that hey, you need to get into this positive thinking crap. This is great. So then somebody cooked up this word of faith crap. And so now you just spout off something. Money come into my checkbook. <laughs> Stupid. Get a job, fool. No money. Don't get me off on that. <laughs> Once you start a certain thinking pattern and it reaches the point, the crossover point, it starts running on its own. For good or bad. Have you ever met somebody they kind of make you sick really? They've always got something good to say even about somebody that's a scum bucket <laughs> It happened to me when I was young I was a teenager and somebody was talking about Adolf Hitler and somebody piped up Well, at least he was a good organizer <laughs> That woman the woman had autonomic processing, but it was in a positive Direction See that Whereas we were running Hitler down ripping him to shreds she her, her processing went to Well, and he was a good organizer. Yeah, I mean it takes a lot of skill to run concentration camps You got to be on the ball there <laughs> The point I'm trying to make here is this is what's wrong with Christianity in America today. This is what's wrong with you this is the root of mental and emotional illness in Christians 
if the spirits are more powerful this process turns into bipolar schizophrenia DID and then the mind races on its own and won't stop the person then can't stop it even though they want to stop it. They can't stop it. It's running on its own. If we brought Wigglesworth back, sat him there, and I spent an hour explaining to him why the gospel doesn't work, and healing's not for today, and it died out with the apostles, it wouldn't even phase him. He wouldn't. Why? Autonomic processing. He his whirlpool is a healing pool. And so, no matter what I say to him, wouldn't even phase him. When I was done telling him that, he'd ask, he'd ask me to pray for me. Automatically. <laughs> if God created the human mind to have the capacity to do this, what about him? Well, it's telling about him. His mind, father's mind, runs automatically into a whirlpool of chronic, unconditional love. And no matter how you sit here and yell at him, you don't love me, you don't care, you're not listening yet. Though his whirlpool of love is still going just like that and then the you didn't face him at all nothing changed at all you griped for two hours, but nothing changed well, I'm worthless I'm no good I'm a failure No father's whirlpool is still rolling No victory Love overcoming Healing Nothing you say can change it. Why that's how he's built He can't help it it runs on its own God's mind runs on its own like a whirlpool and none of the thoughts in his mind about you are negative at all and they never have been. What's that whirlpool called? It's a negative. It's an addiction. It runs on its own. Uh-huh. Robert Palmer had an addiction. What was it? He's addicted to love. <laughs> he could not stop it. And this one would break up and it was rotten, but there he goes again. He'd get into another one and then that would <laughs> How does the devil do it? Let's watch him real quickly. Hopefully this is near the end here. How much time we got? Uh, time to close He puts the thought in your mind click How does he keep the thought in your mind? Well, he makes sure it's a negative thought how does he keep it there? Fear spirits. Keep the negative thoughts running in the person's mind. I'm a failure. I'm gonna die broke. I'm not gonna I'm gonna die alone. I'm no, I'm not a good person. Nobody loves me. Negative thoughts generate fear. Chronic negative thoughts and fear generate trips to counselors, psychologists, psychotherapists. Trips to psychiatrists generate medications. Medications. 
are trying to slow down your whirlpool of chronic negativity Why because it runs on its own It runs by itself now You put the notes together you made the song you develop the rhythm and at some point your habit became permanent and now you can't stop criticizing people you naturally have a critical thought about everything You're a chronic nitpicker You got it from your mom your dad And you do it naturally you don't even know you're doing it. It just runs automatically You're natural you're a natural excuse maker Yeah as soon as something bad happens, you're pointing the fingers. You're looking at somebody else. You're blaming them. You're blaming your your relatives. They were apes. <laughs> you're blaming the neighbors. You're blaming your parents. Oh, it's my genes. Oh, I got a chemical imbalance. <laughs> what are you doing there? You're just simply running your whirlpool. It runs on its own now. Yeah, that whirlpool runs so fast. Those thoughts come in so fast. You get so sick of them. Up, oh, time to go to the doctor. Time for pills. Got to slow it down. Problem is, if you don't get the right combination of pills, those thoughts accelerate. And sometimes those thoughts start taking on voices. Voices. Somebody talking to you. Sometimes you hear your name called Mike you turn around you, you swear to God somebody called your name you heard your name That's how it starts You're driving along. Oh, I keep seeing threes everywhere. I go there's a three God every time I, there's look three threes You don't get it do you He's setting you up to get your whirlpool running with fear the motor fear keeps the negative thoughts alive there it is he puts these thoughts in your mind and fear spirits make the thoughts real as you keep repetitively going over them guess what happens Autonomic processing your mind starts to run on its own and it's negative guess what else happens? Autoimmune diseases your body then starts to develop the sickness that won't go away in your mind I'm too fat. I can't believe how fat I am. It's unbelievable. Brenda, for God's sakes, you're 98 pounds. Stop it. It's not going to work. Her mind is now running on its own. She's fat. Her mother told her she was overweight. She needed to lose weight. She was a kid. The demons told her, hey, you're fat. You need to lose weight. Oh my God, you look awful. They look in the mirror 98 pounds. They, they look fat Don't you see it the mind is running now automatically It's automatic it runs on its own like the universe like the solar system. It all runs on its own These are the usual thoughts they put in there. I'm a failure. I'm so no good. It's always self-deprecating thoughts and if you keep receiving those thoughts and playing them over and over at some point it becomes a habit and then It runs on its own And you can't stop it anymore If you pick up powerful spirits along the way you're going to develop a mental illness Not just a chronic negative thought disorder
That's the advanced stage And that's where you're headed What's a mental addiction called OCD You kept listening to those thoughts for so long You wouldn't stop you wouldn't catch them. You wouldn't take them captive You kept look, listening to those lust thoughts porn thoughts whatever it is it kept running now It's running on its own now. You're trying to stop it and can't stop it As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. No kidding. For sure. Autonomic processing is what? The Bible says it's simply the concept of sowing and reaping. It's a law just like gravity. A couple quick examples, and then we're done. Okay? Luke chapter 22 The elders all came together They're yelling at Jesus. Hey, are you the Messiah? Just cough it up right now. Tell us He says if I tell you you will not believe it anyway Why they had autonomic processing they could not believe it even if they are given truth someone who has a Whirlpool of negativity in their mind can't change even when you give them truth and You have given them truth Bob, what are you doing man? You stole money out of your mom's purse you you took the your dad's tools and so sold them you smoked them what it was going on He don't know what's going on I do and It won't stop now It can't stop now John chapter 5 some guy sitting there by the pool of Bethesda for 38 years this guy's disabled it's unbelievable this story is mind-boggling Jesus walks up to him and said do you want to get healed he wasn't mocking him it was a legitimate question why Jesus understood autonomic processing and guess what this guy had it after 38 years his chronic negative thoughts about him not getting into the pool now ran on their own and he naturally responded with what negativity listen what are you talking about I can't I can't get in the pool and no one will help me and this won't work and that won't work and I've been sitting here for 38 years Jesus looks around he looks at him he goes well that's a decent answer I get that he tells him to stand up and start walking and take this cot out of here He does it Can you imagine that 38 years you've been laying by the pool there disabled some guy walks up to you, you don't even know who the guy is Can you imagine that story? That's one of the wildest stories in all the Bible in my opinion. It's incredible He picks up his cot. He starts walking off What happened to him? Unfortunately ran into the church people <laughs> you run into church people after you've had a miracle you lose your miracle They'll start quizzing you Who told you to pick up your bed and walk? Well, I don't know who it was Jesus hit himself Afterward Jesus found the guy in the temple. He says hey listen You need to stop sinning Something worse could happen to you my God, I can't even believe you made that statement. What's worse than laying there disabled for 38 years? Well, there's a lot of things worth. Hell would be one of them. The guy finds out it's Jesus, and instead of falling on his knees, worshiping him and thanking him for healing him, he turns into an American Christian. He runs over to the Jews and rats on him. Unbelievable Why do you do that? He didn't think anything of it because
it went negative automatically in spite of his miraculous healing moral of the story you cannot cure the mind with a physical miracle You cannot cure your mind even if you receive a physical miracle that is not replace renewing your mind. You cannot cure your mind if God bails you out of bankruptcy, heals your daughter, saves you from a car wreck, a semi coming right at you and it jumps over you miraculously, you're not even scratched. You will still have Autonomic processing Nothing replaces you renewing your mind Thomas isn't around when Jesus shows up after the resurrection remember that He wasn't there. It's out getting a ham sandwich. Well, Jesus comes back and they said to Thomas, listen, I'm not even kidding you. We saw the Lord. All of us saw him. Ten of them. Plus the women. Everybody was telling him that. A whole crowd of people. If you know somebody who has negative thought disorder, autonomic processing, and their mind runs on their own, you can have a crowd of people come around them and tell them something, and they can't get it. Everybody can tell them. And they have the judge told you your spouse told you the prison guard told you <clears throat> your neighbors told you, the old mama told you and they never changed remember that yeah what's the term for that violating probation let me get this straight you were in prison right yeah you got paroled right yeah did you like prison? No. Okay, you're on parole, right? Yeah. And you stole something from a Circle K from an alien? <laughs> and you violated your parole and now you're going back to prison? Is that, is that sum it up? Yes. No, it doesn't. What's wrong with the guy? Just told you. It runs automatically. Okay? Gangsters go to prison, they get right back out and go right back into the gang. Mobsters, gangs, they all do it. None of them go, oh my god, you know what? Jeez, I've had a the light bulbs have gone off in my head here. Gee, this is amazing. I was committing crimes. That's wrong. I can't do that anymore. So I'm going to sell hot dogs and be happy with that. Mm. Those thoughts never come in there because they can't. Don't you get it? Don't you understand? Once you go past habit, your mind starts to run automatically. And even if you get paroled, you will go back to prison. It's called recidivism. It's enormously high. Why are they repeating? I just showed you. Thomas, in spite of everybody telling him they saw Jesus, wouldn't believe it. And he said it. Unless I stick my hand right up in here where that spear went, I ain't going to believe it. <clears throat> now that is a mind that chronically runs Don't you see it? Thomas grew up with the parents. They were all negative They were always saying doubtful things. All oh, that ain't gonna work. This isn't gonna work. You'll never amount to anything You're like your brother. You're this you're that as you keep repeating those thoughts over and over again They start to develop a habit in your mind and at one point the thoughts start to run on their own and you've got a mental whirlpool that won't stop of negativity, chronic negativity.
how did Jesus describe negative thought disorder? What was his term for this? It was in Matthew chapter 13. He said These people are the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah the prophet He said you hear but you don't understand You see but you don't perceive These people heart is waxed gross what's that seared conscience your ears are dull of hearing and your eyes they closed Yeah <clears throat> You get caught for your DUI remember that and then you got to go to classes. don't raise your hand then you got to go to classes Right yeah, I was in classes and they teach you all about drugs in the classes. This is embarrassing because I was a, here. I was a counselor and I'd been counseling addicts. I'm in the drug class with DUI. It's embarrassing. And they tell you everything. Hey, don't drink and drive. This is bad. That's right. Here's why you shouldn't do it. This is wrong. That's wrong. Stop doing this. Stop doing that. Quit doing this. Quit doing that. What happens? Nothing they go right back out start pounding Drinking and driving again every one of them Yeah That's me that's me Now what was going on there not that This is what's going on The mind starts to run on its own You can't stop it The, the dog goes right back to the vomit 50 something 57 percent of pastors have pornography problems according to that last Barna survey What's going on there? I just told you as you entertain lustful thoughts Over a long period of time it starts to develop a pattern of thinking a habit a symphony a melody of processing in the mind and then at some point it runs on its own then it's constant sex it's constant masturbation it's constant because now it's running on its own you don't have a choice anymore you've heard a thousand sermons on it oh my god pornography is sinful it draws in demons it's adultery in the eyes of God you've heard all that crap Hadn't done you any good. Why? It runs on its own now. There it goes. They all relapse. Yeah. Including the Christian pornographic. Porno treatment Christian crusades. Retreats. You ever heard of those? Oh yeah, they take them out in the woods. <laughs> yes, uh, those don't work. Why? The, the guys run the wood program <laughs> don't understand that your mind, positively or negative, at some point will start to run on its own. And you determine which direction it goes. Why? Lest at any time they should what? See with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted so they can be healed. How does God's autonomic processing work? That way. Always ready to convert 100% of the time, and always ready to heal. Amen. And nothing you say or do can change how he thinks. He's built that way. Right there. Oops. It's right there. Oh boy. How did Paul describe NTD? Just like this. Romans 8. They that are after the flesh do phroneo focus on the things of the flesh. Focusing is not a casual thought, it's a collection of thoughts focused on a certain point. Click.
they that focus on things of the spirit they're different Wigglesworth Notice that both of these are autonomic processing One of them positive the other one Negative To be sarks fleshly focused from is death to be spiritually focused is life and peace. Translation to have your whirlpool go spiritually is life and peace. To have the whirlpool go carnally is death. Why? Because if the whirlpool goes negative the carnal mind is extra hostile to God it's the enemy of God and it says listen to this it is not subject to the law of God once your mind starts to run on its own no amount of preaching or teaching or begging or yelling or pleading is going to change it because now, like the universe, it runs on its own. Hupotasso means to subordinate. If I subordinate and I'm not here equal, I'm second in command, like the military. Your mind will not subordinate to the laws of God because it can't. You can't do it. Why? Because your mind is already running automatically. Negatively. So those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Cannot anymore. It runs automatically. It's not that they don't want to. They can't. How can you break negative autonomic processing? What's OC? It's obsessive compulsive negative thought disorder. I made that up <laughs> Yeah, it's not in the literature so I had to make something up Somebody who has an obsessive compulsive negative thought disorder is someone who always thinks about something negative all the time Even when good things are told to them They always go negative particularly about themselves Okay, and let's close after this. How do you stop this insane process? Well, as far as I know, based on my research and personal experience, there's only four ways to do it. Number one, the person has to have a burning desire to change. Okay? I, have, I don't have any idea how many hours I have wasted over the years talking to people who did not change one iota They walked right out of my office and went right back to doing What they said they were not going to do I couldn't even tell you how many Months or years or whatever is eating up eating up to my life doing that The only way to break this cycle is if the person recognizes it and desperately wants to change That's why you've tried so hard to help that person and seen nothing get better Because they don't desperately want to change If they don't if I were you I'd be careful about how much time and energy you spend on them. Number two, I've seen this process broken and the person freed through trauma. It's fabulous. Unfortunately, I, I hate to see it. They get sick. They get in a car accident. 
their spouse leaves them, somebody in the family dies, something happens to the person to shock them. That's the only way they'll stop. I tell them that too. In a counseling session, I've told them that. Listen, you're you're not listening. I know what's wrong with you. It's, I know you're not going to change. You want to change. You'd like to change. But when you reach that point where your thoughts run on their own, wanting to change, wishing to change, and liking to change are not good enough. It can't stop it. And so I tell them, hey, I'll see you after the, the break. It's happened. I got calls from relatives or them. You won't believe what happened. I need to come in. What's the point I'm trying to make? Disasters can be your greatest blessing. Yeah. That'll wreck your word of faith. <coughs> All this prosperity crap's a lie. Sometimes in God loving you and seeing your destiny, seeing it drifting away from you, he will allow a disaster to come into your life. What's he doing? He's breaking that whirlpool, that constant negative. It just runs on its own. Number three, lower percent here, a miracle happens to him. That's how I pray too. I talk to the Lord. I say, Father, I got a, I got a whirlpool sitting in my office here. They're not listening. They're telling me they're listening. They're nodding their head. They're agreeing with me. They're not listening. Can you give me some kind of a miracle here? So then I ask the person, I say, What? Well, how's your health? Is there anything wrong with you? Are you sick? Are you this or that? I'm trying. Oh yeah, I got a bad shoulder. Oh well, let's pray. Let's let's skip this repentance stuff for a minute. Then I go for broke, you know, I just say, hey, Jesus, heal. And something usually happens. And it usually doesn't work. But I have seen it work. So that's why I put it on the list. I've seen it work a few times. But like the pool of Bethesda, the guy rats on Jesus after. Fourth one is what? Yeah, I've seen this work several times. Check it out. I'll prove it to you. Mark chapter 5, a guy who's mentally ill, still has, has a little bit of himself left. He sees Jesus and he fit criteria one, which most Christians do not fit. They were desperate for a miracle. He had a burning desire to be well and be back home and back with his family. He was homeless and he was insane. Remember the story? Oh, yeah. Okay. Of course you do. When the people came out to see him after it was over, he was what? There he was. Sophronale. His mind was now sane after the demons were removed.
people are always afraid of everything they don't understand. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. I know that deliverance work works because I've experienced it, um, but is it also the process of renewing the mind daily and taking our thoughts captive? Because it's, it's easy, like you said, to go back to the moment because it's like that's how you've always seen yourself. Well, the answer is you're 100% correct. You can't keep your deliverance or you, or your healing usually without renewing your mind. Renewing the mind is the most important aspect of it. That's why we put up the teaching videos. That's why I give the handouts. That's why we give away Bibles free. I mean, we're trying, you know. But there's nothing you can do for people who won't renew their minds. You can't force anybody to do anything, and, and I don't try to do it. You do that with relatives. <laughs> okay, let's check this one out. Here we go. A certain woman had been healed of evil spirits. Who was that? Mary Magdala. She was from Magdala, and that's what happened to her. She was completely healed and delivered. Why? Man, she was desperate. She had a burning desire to be healed. Okay? okay. Now, let's take a poll here real quick. Uh, raise your hands if you think you may have autonomic processing or a whirlpool in your mind. Your mind just goes to it, and there it runs, and you don't like it, you don't want it, but the darn thing keeps running. All right, boy, it's amazing. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead to the altar call, please. Let's pray then, Father God. Uh, I went over autonomic processing tonight, and I did the best I could to explain it slowly and thoroughly. Maybe I spent too much time doing it. If I did, I apologize for that. But I just took a poll, and I got a result I wasn't expecting to see. There were a number of people raised their hands that have late stage pre-mental illness. The next step from autonomic processing is mental illness, where the demons take the mind and the mind runs the way they want it to run. And Father God, I'm asking you tonight for a dispensation of grace be given to the deliverance center in Phoenix. I'm asking you right now for my friends on YouTube who have autonomic processing negatively in their mind, negative thoughts run on their own, even though they do not want them, even though they know the thoughts are wrong, even though they may now know they're not their thoughts. They're the thoughts of the spirits, but they still feel bad because of them. They still condemn themselves because of them. They still have depression because of them. And tonight, I'm asking you to give them what you gave Mary Magdala, desperation to be healed. I'm asking that you give them what you gave the maniac of Gadara. Desperation to be well. I want you to help them, Lord, because I do not want my friends to have to face trauma in order to change. However, if that's the only possible way, they will change and fulfill their destiny. If that's the only way they can be healed, then I'm asking you, to do it. But I would prefer that they come down to the altar tonight and fight these chronic negative thoughts that started in childhood, that started in their first marriage, wherever it st started, whenever it started. And that they repent of it tonight and cast these seducing spirits out of their mind and drive these things out. Chronic negativity, 
leads to nightmares bad dreams repetitive bad dreams depression low self-esteem low self-concept and no faith and it leads to doubt and unbelief and tonight I'm asking the Lord for a miracle a dispensation of grace of some kind for us where sin does abound grace does more abound and this these brain demons need to be stopped tonight and driven out and their minds need to be restored to their control and to the control of the Holy Spirit I'm asking in Jesus name for a miracle for my friends tonight without having them face trauma I want you to help them repent I want you to help them change and turn on this thing I tried my best to explain it but it's not going to do any good unless you bless them by a, revel a revelation of how this works and why it works. That's what I need. That's what they need. Please help, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, if you had raised your hand earlier and you had autonomic processing negatively, if you're like Wigglesworth, there's no reason for you to come down here. And you're desperate. And you're desperate. If you're not desperate yet, don't come down here. Now just get up real quick and come down so we can pray for you. You're desperate to have this automatic processing broken in your mind. And you're, you know you have it. And your mind runs on its own. It runs on its own. And as he was saying earlier, you get a trigger. Somebody. Okay. Your ex-husband or ex-wife cheated on you or ran off with somebody and you caught them and as soon as that you see something that looks like them you hear something that looks like heard like that all of a sudden click it triggers and these thoughts start running about that person you don't like about that incident you start replaying it again it runs on its own in your mind that's autonomic processing that's the devil he using a trigger to get you to go back in time to relive a negative experience that God already forgave you for, that you already forgave them for, but he replays it again. Does that make sense? He's replaying a trigger. He's using a trigger to replay something negative. Then your emotions kick in from your soul and you start to feel bad. You feel depressed, you feel angry, you feel frustrated, you feel violated, you feel like there was no justice. You feel like you got screwed. The devil won again. He won again, right? That's how he does it. He uses a trigger to get you to reprocess that negativity. Okay. All right, now close your eyes with me. Take a big breath and relax for a second. Thank you. Let's wait here for a second. The Holy Ghost come in. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. Father God, we've got mind control spirits here tonight. Sweet Holy Spirit, we got seducing spirits here tonight. We got the brain demons here tonight. The brain demons are here. They use triggers. They use triggers for drugs, for sex, for lust, for vengeance, for justice. They use triggers. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you people are standing right here. Raise your hand if you can, <coughs> excuse me, speak in tongues. One, two, three, four, five, six. You speak in tongues? Seven. Eight, nine, ten. Ten, okay. okay. Now, if you don't speak in tongues, uh, come up here and stand close to me, will you? You don't speak in tongues. There we go. Come on up there and see me. Come, to, come in here. Yeah, come on in here. Come on in here. Hey, come over here. Thank you. You speak in tongues? Oh yeah, come here. Hang on. 
All right. Russ, do you speak in tongues? You speak in tongues? You do? You guys do? You guys all speak in tongues? Yes. Oh, great. Okay, now I'm going to show you something. You're not going to believe it. Watch this. Come on up here behind these people. If you speak in tongues, ready? Let's come up close to them, right behind them. You just look at me now. Look at me now. Come in here. Okay. All right. I know. Where's my uh, prayer team at? Hey, can you come on over here with me? Who's over here? Come on over here, hon. Okay. All right. Now, if you don't speak in, I close your eyes. Just close your eyes. There. Ready? Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. All right. If you speak in tongues, stand behind those people. <clears throat> Go in there, would you? Go in there. Okay, ready? I want to talk to the people that are speaking in tongues. Now, what I'm about to tell you is going to sound kind of weird. I learned this trick a few years ago. You can crack these brain demons by using something I invented years ago. I made up a name for it. It's called War Tongues. I did it here a few months ago. All right. Now, if you can't speak in tongues, just close your, close your eyes. Take a couple of big breaths. All right. My ministry team is going to pray for you after we start. Okay. Those of you who can speak in tongues, what you do is you use your gift of tongues, it's your prayer language, and you use it like a weapon. Instead of prayers, you use it to break the strongholds of Satan. And you do it like this. You start praying in tongues and then you crank it like this. In the name of Jesus Christ, Dora Moshada, Yandora Moshe Vele, seducing spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus, come out, Yano Voshatra, Yandre Moshe Vela, Orevala, Yandore Moshe Vole. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of my head. Get out of my head. Come out of my mind. Automatic processing. I command you, stop in the name of Jesus. Louder. Fight back. Put your hands on your head. Come on. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come out of my head. Negative thoughts, come out. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. I said, come out. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. I said, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Out. Come out. I said. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Out of my head. Say it. Come out. Seducing spirit. Come out of me. Say it. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of me. On the Ramo Shabale. Come out. Go. Come on. Fight back. Fight back now. Come out in Jesus' name. Get out of my head. Come out. Spirit, I command you. Come out of me. Seducing spirit, come out of my head. Come out now. Get out of my head now. Go now. Go. 
No. Come out, I said. Big yawn. Good. Big one. Big yawn. Come out. Come out. There it is. Big yawn. Say it. Come out. Get out of my head. Come out. Come out of my body right now. Spirit of infirmity, come out of my legs. Spirit of infirmity, come out of my legs. Weakness, come out. Come out of me. Get out of my head. Come out. Get out of my head. Hating my wife, come out of my head. Cancer, come out of my body. Arguing with my kids, come out of my head. Pornography, come out. In the name of Jesus, come out now. Get out. Come out of me. Come out of me, I said. Come out. Come out of me. I command you to go. Come out of me. There it is. Come out, witchcraft. Come out, sin and evil. Come out, anger. Come out, vengeance. Jealousy. Envy. Come out. Come out, I said. Lust. Drugs. Hateful thoughts, cursing thoughts, lying thoughts, come out. Come out of my head. Come out of my head right now. Say that. Come out of my head. Get out. Come out of my head. Come out of my head, I said. Come out of my head now. Say it. Come out of my head. Say it. Get out of my head. Honey, you got the anointing. Use it. Go. Go, honey. Use it. Use the anointing. Satan, let go of my mind right now. Say that. Say it. Satan, let go of my mind. Say it. Come out. Good. Say that. Come out of my head. Get out of my mind right now. Every ugly man that ever touched me comes out of me tonight. All of them. Come out. All the bad men come out of me right now. All of them. All of them come out of me. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of my head, you stinking demon. All the bad men come out now. All the disappointments, all the people that betrayed me, all the betrayers, come out of me right now. Come out. Get out of my head right now. Get out. It's a spirit in your brain. Get him out. In the name of Jesus, I command you, come out. Come out. Let your tears go. Don't hold back. Let your tears go. Don't hold back. Come out. Come on, Trini. Let your tears go. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody that hurt comes out tonight. All of them. Get out of my head right this second. Unforgiveness. Get out of my head. Get out of my mind in Jesus' name. Come on. Get out. Out of my head. Get out of my body right now. Go. Oh. Unforgiveness of self. I repent of it. I repent. Hating myself. Criticizing myself. Adultery. Fornication. Come out. Come out. Get out of there. You get out of me right now. I command you to go. I'm telling you to go right now. Get out of my body right now. Go on. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Come out of there. All the negative thoughts about myself, I command you to come out. I command you to come out now. Come out. Every negative thought. All of them. All of them. Get out of my head. Get out right now. Come out. 
Come on, let your tears show. Come on, sweetie. Come on. Open your heart. Come out. Come out. Come on. You got to get all those people that hurt you out. All the betrayers. Go. Out. Get all of them go. He goes. She goes. The whole crew goes. All of them now. This is the last night. Go now. All of them. Right now. Right now. I command them to go. I command you to go. Go. There it is. Come out. Come out. Go. Out. There. Out. Out. All of them. All the bad men. All the cheaters and liars. All of them. They all go now. They all go now. They all go now. Come on. All of them. They all go tonight. I command you, devil. Come out of my body right now. Get out right now. Come out of my body. Come out of my genitals. Come out of my mind. Negative thoughts come out of my mind now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get out of there. Come out. No matter what. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Come out. Breathe. Go. Go. Breathe. Come out. Come out now. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out. Leave her genitals right this second. Come out. Come out of there. Every adulterer, come out right now. Go. Come out. Now. Bitterness. Frustration. Anger. Go. Leave me now. I command you to leave me now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of there. Get out of my body. Spirits from my childhood. Come out in Jesus' name. Abuse and childhood. Come out of me right now. Go. Come out now. Come out. Get out of there. Cancer, I curse you. I command you to die. Come out of there right now. Come out. Come out. Cancer, come out. Cancer, go. Cancer, go. Right now, go, I said. Go. Cancer, go. Get out of kidneys. Satan, lose your home. Satan, go. Come out. Satan. Demons for my wife. Go. My wife's demons. Go. Demons for my wife. Go. Wife demons. Go. Right now. Right now. Come out right now. Come on, honey. Get mad. That's him shaking right there. The demons are shaking their fear. You've got the anointing. Go. Go for it. You've got the anointing. Go. Get out of my head right now, you stinking demon. I hate your guts. You food demon. You're trying to give me diabetes. High blood pressure. Go. 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 My frustration with my wife. It's come out. Anger. Frustration, my job. Frustrations. Satan, come out of me. Get out of my head. Hurry up. Get out of my head. Right now. Food demons, come out. Come out of there, you food, you evil spirit of food. Get out of my body. You're trying to make me sick. You want me to die with a heart attack. That's what you want me to do. You want to give me a heart attack. Get out of there. Come out. Right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. 
Out. Hurry up! Go! Go! Come on, sweetheart, fight harder. Let go. There it goes. Witchcraft and sorcery. New Age. Church demons. Come on out. Come on. Out. Out. Take a breath and blow. Good girl. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Go. Who hurt you, hon? Who hurt you? My first boyfriend. When you were younger, when you were younger, what do you do to you? Slapping you around. What was his name? Tanio. What? Tanio. Tanio. Is he still alive? Okay, now listen. Tanio was not the one choking you. He was diagnosed with personality disorder. He was diagnosed with disassociative identity disorder. Okay, now he didn't have disassociative. Those were other personalities from the spirit world that were living in his head. And they told him they wanted you dead. <laughs> they told him that. <laughs> He would talk about how he battled with things in his mind. It wasn't things, it was a person. It was a person. And I, feel like ever since he, I feel like ever since he died, I feel like I have privilege. Yes, you do, because they left his body. When somebody with demons dies, they leave that body, and then they go to the next uh, easy source to get into, usually the victim. <laughs> About that. Yeah, you should be worried about it. What's his name? Tanya. Tanya, raise your hands. Now close your eyes. Now just take a big breath. Breathe. Breathe. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I lift this beautiful woman up to you right now. She was physically, emotionally, and spiritually abused by Tanya. But it never was Tanya. The demons took him when he was a child, and they told him to kill her. They told him to strangle her. And she thought it was him. She was deceived. And right now, we are going to forgive Tanio and release him from her soul. She's going to forgive him, even though he's not alive anymore. If he was here, we would both forgive him. And we would turn him over to you, Lord. And she's going to forgive him right now. In Jesus' name, I forgive Tanio. I release him from my soul. I give him to you, Lord. And I want his evil spirits out of me. Now. Okay, blow. Okay, devil, you heard her. She said, come out now. Come on out. Tanio, come out. Come out. Keep blowing. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Tanio, you never. Tanio, come out now. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Go. Come out of my lungs. Come out. I release him from my soul. I release him from my soul. Go. I release these wounds from these beatings and chokings. And I let them go. In the name of Jesus. I will place them on the cross of Calvary. Right now. Tanio, come out of me. 
Come out. Right now. Get out of my body. Come out. Let's go. Go. Come out. What's he doing in there? You sense anything? You have any bad feelings about him? You what? I've never been able to say I forgive the things that I just forgave. And that's all oh, really? Okay. Oh, oh, that's a good sign. That's a Holy Spirit on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Say that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for lifting him out of my soul right now. I release him from my soul right now. I let him go. Thank you, Jesus. Now all of his spirits leave you now. Come out. <laughs> Who hurt you? You don't know. Were you, were you married? No. Were you in witchcraft? New age? I was like doing. So I followed Ascended Master teachings. Jesus took that from me. Yeah. Did you get rid of the spirits from that? I threw up once, but I I still have had that spell that was that just came over me when you guys started writing this thing that I go into. Yeah, like, I don't that, know. He's still in there. Huh? He's in there. I know. I know it's still there. And All right. When I first came to Jesus, it, when I first very came to Jesus, it was over alcohol. I would go through these spells, but I'm 125 days clean from alcohol. But I okay. still have this stuff in me, though. I know. What was the root of drinking? Why were you drinking? Um, I don't know. I have a reason. I, I, I suffer from self hatred. I don't know where it comes from, but I just. I Why don't you like yourself? Complex. Why? I don't know. I beat myself up. I don't even know. why. People ask me all the time. I wasn't a molested or anything. I had a good upbringing. I don't know where this comes from. What do you beat yourself up about? Thank you, Jesus. I just don't like myself. I don't, I, I Why? Don't, because I failed. Like I just like I failed people. Did you fail? I don't know. I just like I feel like I misled my sisters and just don't get paid. And I just I, know, I just have this loyalty and like, conscience when it comes to stuff. You're, you're telling me you've got regrets. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of regrets. A lot of regrets. You look back on your life and you say, I should have done that, I should have done this, I shouldn't have done that, and I shouldn't have done this. Okay. Now, when you came to Christ, did you know that uh, all those things disappeared? Did you know that? You did? I mean, I don't know. I know, but I still don't forgive myself, I guess. Oh, yeah. You, you know it there. So you never knew it here. <laughs> Failures and sins are all washed in the blood. But you're carrying your regrets from your past, and that's blocking your current deliverance. Go ahead and repent. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. How are you feeling right now? A lot better? I really like the service. Me and my husband, we live here and we want to serve. Where's your husband? How's your husband? Nice to meet you. Now, what's wrong with your husband? Huh? What's wrong with your husband? He's got so many personal issues that he should probably talk about. He has a very deep childhood issue that he needs to talk with someone about himself. Oh, somebody abused him when he was a kid? Okay. Now, who abused you? Huh? Who abused you? Oh, my cousin, my older cousin. When I was younger. How old were you? Like six. How old was he? Um, like thirteen or fourteen. Oh, uh, was it fondling or anal yeah, intercourse or what did he do to you? It was like fondling. Okay. What was his name? Bryson. Bryson. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whenever somebody gets a molested as a child, the person that's molesting them transfers a spirit in their body. Yeah. 
That's a spirit of rejection. He tends to push people away a lot. That sounds really interesting. It's, it's not him. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually nothing wrong with him. There's nothing wrong with him. His cousin transferred a rejection spirit to there. He said, I want to be whole again. He's already whole. There's nothing wrong with him. The spirit of rejection is causing that negative feeling about himself. There's a person living in there. It's not you. See, what's your name? John. John is here. And the rejection spirit from the cousin is here. They're two different persons. Right? You didn't marry him. You married him. You don't love him. You love him. Now, here's what you got to do. What was that cousin's name? Bryson. Bryson. Ready? Watch this. You just raise your hands like that. Father God, I bring to you your future Bible teacher. He's standing right here. He was abusing a child. Bryson, his demons told him to do something to him that was horrible. And it brought shame and fear into his soul. There it is right there. You see him jump? You see that demon jump? Bryson, we forgive you tonight. Wherever you are, be blessed. Go, go, go. The demons told you to molest me. I know it wasn't you. And tonight, I'm going to release Bryson and that spirit of rejection out of my body. In Jesus' holy name, I command you to come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. All right, take a breath and blow. Come on out, rejection spirit. Come out right now. Bryson, come out. Bryson, come out. There he is. Come out. Keep blowing. Come out of there. Come out. Bryson, come out. In the name of Jesus. Get out of my husband. Come out, Bryson. Right now. Come out. A little generous. You found on me, you filthy, unclean spirit. Get out of my body. You filthy, unclean spirit. Come out of my body right now. In Jesus' name, I forgive him. Bryson, you're forgiven, and I release you. This thing's got to come out of there. Are you going to come down and sit? Get him out of there right now. Pat, there he goes. Come out. Oh, come out. No terminal illness for me. Go. No cancer for me. Go. No, come out of me right now. Go. Get out of my body right this second. Hurry up. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Come out. Get out of me. Bryson, come out. You pervert. Come out. You pervert. Come out. Good. Keep going. Come out. And go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. I repent of carrying around all these regrets. It's ruining my life. All these regrets were washed away with the blood of Jesus. It's a sin for me to carry them around. And I repent of it right now. And I command this last spirit from the occult. You. Come out of me now. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out, you new age killer. Come out of me right now. You familiar spirit of witchcraft. Come out right now. Regrets come out of me. 
criticism of myself. Come out. Blaming myself. Running myself down. Come out. Hating myself. Come out. Repent of it. I repent of it. I repent. Come out. Come out. Get out. I'm not getting sick. I'm not going to get sick. Come out of me right now. I'm not getting sick. It's not worth it. These people are not worth it. Come out now. So what happens? What happens? Do I feel lighter a little bit? Are you truly forgiving? You did? How many times did he do it? A lot. You mean like over how long? Uh, it's hard to remember because I've kind of like buried it. It's hard to remember because I've buried it. But what was it, a few weeks or years? Yeah. A month? Okay. So he did it three or four times or something like that, right? Okay. Yeah. Do you guys do sessions like this on a regular basis? What's that? How often do you guys do sessions like this? Every Thursday and Friday. We would like to start attending them more. We would like to. This is the first time that I've ever been to a church. I, I'm oh, you like it here. Oh, Thursday yeah, no, and Friday I, I really love it. So we want to start now, uh, that rejection spirit, he heard me. He heard me tonight. He heard me talking to you. He heard me. And he's going to retaliate. His, his, his family tells him to bottle things up and not to talk. He no. He's never been able Stop to talk doing about that. this in his life. That makes so you sicker. No, that makes you sicker. Yeah, I know. That's the devil wants you to bottle it up. Jesus now. wants you to confess it. Exactly. He's, now, normally, normally this rejection demon leads them into other sins later in life. <laughs> and normally it's stuff like sins that make them feel better because they don't feel good about themselves so they'll get into alcohol drugs different things addictions that kind of stuff that's him doing it it's not him it's not your husband okay so all that stuff has to be confessed all of it all them sins yeah. there you go confess it say it out uh oh Come out. I'm going to introduce her to you. She's my friend, my co worker. Who's your friend? Oh, good. She does. What's her name? Odio. She's from Odio. Odio. She got witchcraft. Where is she from? She's from Africa. I, I don't remember Africa. the name of the country. But she's from Africa. She's from Africa. I confess all these evil sins that I got involved in, Lord. I'm so sorry. Drinking, drugs, pornography, chronic masturbation, all of it. I repent of all of it. All of these sins. Come on, just confess it. <coughs> just confess. Just confess it. Just confess it. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I'm asking you to forgive me. I'm sorry for my anger. I'm sorry for cursing and swearing. I'm sorry for chronic masturbation and pornography. I'm sorry. Have mercy on me, Lord. I'm sorry. So sorry. I'm so sorry. Just repent of it. I'm so sorry. Just repent of it. Repent of it. Just repent of it. Thank you, Jesus. Just repent of it. Go. I repent in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Addictions go. Go up and up. Come on, buddy. You're right there. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Come on. You just do what he tells you. Do everything he tells you. Get it out. I'm really sorry I hurt you, Lord. I'm so sorry. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Come out. Get out of my body. I hate you. Get out of my girl. I hate you. Come out of me. Get out of girl. Forgive me, Jesus. Jesus, forgive me. Help me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Just confess it. I repent of my regrets. I repent of criticizing myself. 
I repent of not liking myself. I'll repent of it right now in Jesus' mighty name. I love you. Love you, man. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good memory. I love you so much. <laughs> 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 oh, I love you. I miss you. I miss you. Oh, man. Good to see you. <laughs> My friend. I love you. Always, always. Oh, yeah. You know that. You know that. You know Thank that. you for coming back. Oh, man. I'll be here next week. Sure. <laughs> I God forgive me. God forgive me. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. God forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Forgive me, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Me. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Get out of there. Come on. Come on. Yawn. Go. Eric comes. Good. Next one. Go. Out it comes. There it goes. Out it comes. Out it comes. Can you think of anything you need to apologize to her for? The lies. The what? lies and all the pain and that's all. Tell her. Tell her. Say it. Say it. Get out of body. Oh. Who's that girl? Uh, she got a lot of deliveries just now. What's wrong with her? She's just nothing. I, what I was calling out rejection and suicide and all that stuff. Oh, should I commit suicide? She didn't say she was, but it came out when I said it. Oh, how are you feeling tonight? How are you feeling? I'm feeling well. You doing good? Yeah, no. Did you hurt you when you were young? Right now. My dad let me know when I was young. Oh, how old were you? I, I was three. Three? Come on. What's your dad's name? Eddie. 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 Here, raise your hands. What's your name? Violet. Violet. Okay, Lord Jesus, I got Violet here. And she's a beautiful woman. But when she was three years old, she got hurt really bad, really bad. It wasn't her fault. It was not her fault. When her dad left her, a scar got in right here on her soul. And Lord Jesus, she and I tonight are going to forgive her dad for abandoning her and leaving her with illness of abandonment and rejection and low self-esteem self-hatred self-criticism and loneliness and fear and we command her dad right now there he is here he comes there he comes to come out in Jesus holy name come out of her and her dad will leave her tonight and we're going to replace her dad with her heavenly father who would never abandon her or hurt her in a million years she's going to forgive her dad and release him come out out come out I take a breath and blow come out of there come out right now come dad I love you but I have to let you go now I'll let you go daddy come out come out come on here he comes come out come out right now come out hurry up come out of there come out of there you know her hey, you know her you know her oh your uncle come out right now come out go come out right now go go dad I love you but I have to let you go come out come out come out I forgive my dad and I let him go come out 
I let my heavenly father in and my dad out. Out. Come 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 out. Right now. Come out right now. Quickly. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. I let my dad go now. Come out of me. Come out. Come out of me. Rejection and self rejection. Come out. Come out. Criticizing myself. Criticizing my body. Come out. Come out. Come out. How old is she? Oh, she's 15. 15? Is she a virgin? For sure. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Come out of me. Tell him to come out. Come on. Say it. Daddy, I love you, but I have to let you go tonight. I'm going to let you go right now. Leave me now. Come. Come out. Spirit of fear. Come out. Fear of being alone. Come out. There he is. Here he comes. Come out of her. Come on out. That's him. Come out. Come out. Come out. There he is. Come out. Here he comes. Keep coughing. Come out. There he is. There he comes right now. Come. There he comes. Come out. Daddy, go. Come out. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out and go. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out, everybody. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Keep going. Hey, you know her? You know that girl? You're her mom? Oh, okay. What was his name again? Eddie. Dad, that was your husband? Yeah. What did he do to you? To me? Yeah. He, uh, Come out. He was abusive. Verbal or physical? Where's he at? I don't know. Uh, what else did he do to you? Come out right now. Go. It was just mentally and physically. Eddie? Okay, raise your hands. <laughs> her husband, Eddie, beat her. And then he abandoned the family. Okay? Now just take a big breath, okay? Big breath. Blow. Blow. Big breath. Father God, uh, this beautiful uh, woman uh, was abandoned and beaten by her husband. And he left terrible scars on her soul. And she was hurt with every beating and every curse word and every negative thing he ever said. And evil spirits of rejection transferred in and used food as a comfort for her. She uses food as a comfort for her wounds. And these spirits are going to try to give her diabetes, high blood pressure, and a heart attack later. And this cannot happen tonight. Eddie, in the name of Jesus, you must come out of your wife. You must come out of your wife right now and take these other unclean spirits and these rejection spirits out of her and her daughter. Come out. Eddie, I forgive you and I release you. I forgive you and I release you. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Come out of there. There it is. Good. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of me. Right now. Depression. 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 Come out. Come. Come out. Get out of me. Come on, sweetie. Tell them to go. Every spirit. Come out. 
using food as a comfort. Come out of me. Food spirit, come out. Amen. Food spirit, you come out. Eddie, you come out. Up and out. Up and out. Come on. Come out. Come out. Come on, sweetheart. You got the anointing. Use it. Come on, sweetheart. Use that anointing. Use it. You got the Holy Spirit on you. You got the Holy Spirit all over you. Come on. Your uncle and I are praying for you. Let's go. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, come out of me. Mind control. Mind control. Seducing spirits. Go. Come out. Hurry up. Come out. Right now, I said. Hurry up. Come out. Come out. Right now. Go. I want you to this to my friend now. Amen. Come on. You're the one that did it. This is Michael. Oh, my God. We work together. What happened? Robert. Something come out? Oh. Raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say that. Say that. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Say that. Thank you, Jesus. Louder, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let your tears go. You're holding back. You know, you have a nice anointing, but you hold back. Now, let's go. Tell him you love him and release it. Come on now. Stop holding back. Stop holding back. What's wrong with her? Just rejection. Um, she uh -huh. says when she prays God, praises God, she can't. It's, she's not fully doing it. Like oh. What you said. Hey, these are mind control spirits. They're trying to stop your praise. Okay, they're easy to beat. Watch this. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. Let that moan go. There, moan it out. Here it comes. Romans chapter eight says you moan in the spirit. Go. There you go. Moan it out. Good girl. Come on. Keep going. Good. Good. Keep on moaning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Help us. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. How'd you do tonight? How'd you do tonight? Better? Worse? Worse or better? Lightness, that's better. Good. Now, you always have to end it with praise. Ready? Go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say it. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let your tears go. Thank you, Jesus. What's the scoop on this gal? Uh, she had been molested a bunch of times, and her mom was into witchcraft. What's her name? Do you remember? Rosa. Hey, hey. Rosa, you got any bad feelings about your mother? No, I don't. How about your dad? No. How about yourself? No. Anybody? No. Okay. Were you in witchcraft? Yes. What'd you do? I thank you for your prayers. Thank you. You gonna come back? We'll come back. Uh, huh? I uh, at one. Thanks for coming. Please come back. Uh, at one point. What were you doing? Uh, I was reading the cards. Oh, you read cards? Oh. Yeah. Now listen, reading cards is a very dangerous sin because it lets in familiar spirits, and then they they destroy the person's body and they get sick and die. Now you got to repent of that really, really hard. Raise your hands. Let go. Raise your hands. God forgive me. God forgive me for reading cards. I can't believe I did it. I can't believe I did that. God have mercy on my soul. Help me, Jesus. I'm so sorry I done that. I renounce cards. I renounce Satan and all his works. I renounce witchcraft and familiar spirits. I renounce witchcraft and familiar spirits. 
I command it to come out of my body. I command I hate you now. Come out. Come out. There he is. Come out right now. Go. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. There he is right there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Yeah. Terror cards go. Amen. Terror cards of death. Amen. Here it goes. Terror cards of death. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Lose her body. Go. Go. Get out. I drive you out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. There he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. There he comes. He's coming now. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Go. Come out of my legs. Come out of my legs. Come out of my legs and heal. Heal in Jesus' name. Come out of my legs. Come out of my arms. Come out of my arms right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of that body. Go. Go. There he comes. There he comes. There he comes. There he comes right there. Go. Come out of there, you witch. There he goes. There he goes. Come out. Go. Evil. Evil. Evil, go. Come out. Go. Go. All right, try your legs now. Check your legs and see if they changed. See if there's any change. Take your legs like that. Anything? Is there any change? Is it worse? It just hurts. How about that one? Is that better or worse? Uh, this one feels real good. This that one doesn't? Now, when you were in witchcraft or reading cards, did you commit any sexual sins? What? Sexual sins? Like sex. Were you committing adultery or fornication or involved with sexual activity with cards? No. Were you married? Yes. Was your husband cheating on you? Huh? Did he sleep with other women and then come back and sleep with you? Yes. What was your husband's name? Pedro. Pedro. Pedro? You still married to Pedro? He passed on. He's dead? Okay. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Pedro, come out. Pedro, you pervert, come out. Pedro, come out. Pedro out. Pedro, you pervert. In the name of Jesus, come out of her body right now. Come out of her left leg. Pedro, you cheater. You cheated on me. You betrayed me. And I release you from my soul. Pedro, come out. Pedro, come out. Come out. Come out now. All Pedro's demons from other women come out of me right now. Come out, Pedro. Come out of me. All your curses, all your lies, all the cheats. Here he, here he comes. There's Pedro. Come out, Pedro. Go. Go. Come out, Pedro. Go. Come on, Pedro. Hey, uh, what did you call that? What was the person you said that, like, like, turned, turned around, like, told on Jesus? Around?
But like, what were you saying uh, in, your, in your sermon today? Today? Yeah. That you are. Uh, what did I say about how long Jesus? Is that what you said? Yeah, like the like the, some like the guy turned and like told him a sneak out Jesus or something like that. Oh, the, the mentally ill guy. Yeah, he ran down and worshipped. He ran down and worshipping like this. Thank you, Jesus, and glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter five. Mark chapter five. Mark chapter five. Pedro, come on, Eric. Come on, come on. Pedro. Every spirit. <laughs> come out, Pedro. Come out of the legs. Come out of the legs. Pedro, come out right now. Hurry. Pedro, out. Come out, Pedro. Cheating husband. Cheating husband. Come out of my vertebrae. There it comes. Good. Come out right now. Come on out. Come on, honey. Let your tears go. Let that moan go. Cry out. Cry out. The Holy Spirit is going to heal you tonight. Release it. Romans chapter 8. Release your moans. The Holy Spirit groans for you with prayers that cannot be uttered. He moans for you. Just release it. She needs. She needs an appointment with you. She needs to make an appointment. Okay. Did you give her a card. Yeah. Did you get her a card? No, no. Go pick it up. Out okay. there. Out the, the lobby. I'll go pick it up. And Mike. Mike. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> Love you. I love you too. Oh my God, I just have a lot of people. How you doing? How'd it go? Did you forgive your dad? Listen, you're a beautiful girl, and the Holy Spirit already has a husband picked out for you. You don't even have to look for him. He'll come in at just the right time. Boom, he'll fall right in your lap. It's all covered for you. Everything covered for you. Okay? Thank you for coming tonight. Hello, brother. How you doing, man? Love you. Good job. What a night.